So after Patrick Henry has served his three terms of governor from 1776 up to 1779, Thomas Jefferson is elected the second governor of Virginia. And it's not entirely his fault, but Jefferson has the worst of it. The war has been going on for a number of years. Uh, Virginia, like all of the other new states, is getting very tired of the war. Resources are being depleted. And the British are starting to actually attack Virginia. Henry didn't really have to deal with a lot of British soldiers in Virginia. In 1781, when the British attack, uh, Lord Cornwallis is actually going to take over Richmond. And the legislature has to flee from Richmond west to Charlottesville. Now, um, Jefferson thought that he had called out the militia, but he had a hard time getting the militia to actually respond. They had been called out so many times over the course of the revolution. Uh, they've been called out repeatedly. Jefferson believes the militia had failed to do its duty in defending Richmond adequately. But they end up in Charlottesville. It's now June uh, of 1781, uh, June 4th to be specific. And Jefferson's at the end of his second term, uh, that his term is basically over. And he tells the legislature, you need to get a different governor. They could elect him for a third term, but he says, you need somebody with military experience. The British are in Richmond. The British are all over the eastern part of the state. Get a governor with military experience. And you need to give him more power. The Constitution gives the governor so little power, it's very difficult to respond to this military emergency. Well, on June 4th, uh, in spite of Jefferson having advised the legislature that he should not serve for a third term, they had not yet elected a new governor. And Bannister Tarleton, bloody Bannister Tarleton, uh, one of the most feared British officers, leads a cavalry group up to capture the uh, Virginia legislature meeting in Charlottesville and Thomas Jefferson on his mountaintop home at Monticello. Well, the legislature gets word that Tarleton is coming, and rather uh, quickly and rather disorganized manner, they flee west to Stanton, about 30 to 40 miles west of Charlottesville. Jefferson does not go with the legislature. 2020 hindsight, he probably should have. Instead, he flees with his family about 60 to 70 miles southwest to his home at Poplar Forest. Well, the legislature gets to Stanton and their meeting, and one of the first orders of business is to elect a new governor, which they do. But there's also a great deal of anger about Jefferson failing to join them, Jefferson seeming to abandon the state at its time of trial. And so George Nicholas, a young member of the uh, House of Delegates, introduces a resolution to investigate Jefferson's governorship. Now, in essence, they're suggesting that Gef Jefferson was both incompetent and maybe a coward for having fled from Richmond and then Charlottesville and not joining the legislature in Stanton. This is a great insult to Jefferson as an 18th century gentry gentleman. Jefferson always says, I know Nicholas introduced the resolution, but it wasn't Nicholas's resolution. It was Patrick Henry's. Once again, it's one of these situations where history's not perfectly clear whether Patrick Henry was be behind this resolution or not. I think more likely than not he was, but the record, as I say, is not perfectly clear. What's critical for our purposes is that Jefferson believed that Patrick Henry was behind this resolution. Well, uh, and I think it's possible. I mean, Patrick Henry, on the one hand, would be sympathetic with the difficulties Jefferson faced, but Patrick Henry might also have been saying, you know, I was governor for three years and I never had to flee and I never abandoned the legislature. But regardless of who introduced the resolution, uh, a few months later, we're going to have the Battle of Yorktown in Yorktown, Virginia. Washington and Rochambeau will surround Cornwallis, the surrender, and of course, everybody knows that the revolution is basically over. The war will continue for two years until we actually get the Treaty of Peace, but there's not that much fighting that goes on in the uh, new states after Yorktown. So in December of 1781, the legislature is meeting and they think better of this investigation of Jefferson. Maybe that was hasty. Maybe it was unfair. And they uh, terminate the investigation without ever really having had an investigation. And they unanimously, including Patrick Henry, vote their thanks to Thomas Jefferson for his great service as governor. But... Um, one might well say this is the beginning of a very deep loathing that Thomas Jefferson has for Patrick Henry. Uh, within a year, Jefferson says to George Rogers Clark that Henry was all tongue without either head or heart. You know, I always tell my students, you know, people don't know how to insult each other today. Jefferson could throw a good insult. 
Henry is all tongue without either head or heart. Uh, again, this is the beginning of a very deep hatred Thomas, between Thomas Jefferson and Patrick Henry, which is going to have significant influence on the course of events in the future.